The line is going to change things for the better because we can implement global best practice into every element of the city. We are working with the best architects and planners from around the world in order to take all of the learnings we've inherited from other cities and create a new city from scratch. At the line, we're working on building an urban model which provides unprecedented livability, a model for nature preservation and sustainability, all while providing a unique environment for economic growth. I am Tariq Adoumi, and I am the Executive Director of Urban Planning at NIOM. I am Giles Pendleton, and I am the Executive Director for The Line Proponent. I am Selwa Al Khulayri, and I'm a Senior Architect at NIOM Urban Planning. My name is Michio Kaku. I'm a professor of theoretical physics, and I'm also a futurist. What will a city of the future look like? When I was a child, I used to think about the city of the future. Are we going to have flying cars? Are we going to visit the moon and Mars? When I grew up, I began to look at these cities like Paris, London, New York, and I saw traffic jams. I saw pollution. I saw tremendous inequalities. And I said to myself, we can do better. We can create, perhaps out of the desert, a city that would be sustainable, livable, a city of the future. The line shows us a new way of doing things, a new pattern by which we can make a livable future. Placemaking to me is about creating the canvas for community. It's about creating spaces for people to want to visit and live in. A place that cares for its society. Many demographers think that the cities of the future will contain about 50 million people. That's not livable at all. At The Line, we are working on creating a template by which we can create cities of the future. That's where jobs are. That's where opportunities are. And so placemaking to me is about creating a legacy, creating a template by which other nations can then compare their cities, their plans with what's being done here in Saudi Arabia. So what are we looking at here? So we're looking at the line as a whole. The line spans across three different geological regions. So we have the coastal desert, the mountain, and the upper valley. It starts out at 500 meters height, and then slowly as the topography rises, it disappears into the mountains. We have the hidden marina. This is where we're starting construction. We bring in a canal from the Red Sea to create a bay all this is sustainable, right? NEOM itself is 100% renewable energy. We produce energy through solar, wind, and hydrogen. Uh -huh. We also have 100% sustainable water, meaning we take out water through desalination mm. from the sea. Right. However, we don't dump the brine back into the sea. Mm -hmm. So we use that salt and we recycle it, making the process very sustainable. So this is a section of mm -hmm. the line. You're going to have the mirror. This is where the mobility at height is going to be happening. This is your neighborhood, for example, right? Uh huh. And where are the shops where people can go shopping? So for things? all of here is shops, right? Shops. So where your public space is, these that could be office spaces, right? Where people right. come down for lunch and sit outside. And basically, you're five minutes away from your daily needs, meaning mm -hmm. your school, your nursery. Ah, makes life very convenient then, right? Everything's within walking distance. Like Midtown Manhattan, you're within walking distance of everything, of everything. within Midtown. But outside of that is hell. <laughs> it gets worse and <laughs> The worse. commuting is incredible exactly. to get to that Midtown Manhattan. So this is where all the action takes place? Absolutely. Right here? Absolutely. So okay. this is representative of an, of an 800 meter wide module, uh -huh. 500 meters tall. These lights demonstrate what a mobility corridor would do. So as you can see, we have no ground floor. The subway is at multiple heights. And mm -hmm. that allows you to potentially, if you're in a, in a unit here, you can either go up to a subway or down to a subway. So if I live here, then the five minute rule would be around here? Yeah, so five minute rule is generally 400 meters, mm -hmm. vertically and horizontally, and literally across. So we live in a three dimensional city. The five minute rule is, is really a function of achieving your, your daily needs. And no cars. This no is cars. amazing. No cars. Yes, I think that the principle of the module is about community. You don't enjoy or become part of community. 
mm-hmm. by driving past in a car. Mm-hmm. So the idea is, is to encourage our residents and visitors to explore the city on foot. So your world, with all your basic needs, are met within five minutes of your living unit. Like Lego blocks, if you stack these modules one after the other, after the other, you get the line. Absolutely. First of all, I'd like to thank you for such an illuminating discussion of the future. Thank you for the opportunity of interacting with the individuals that have made this possible and of actually going to the site itself. It's an experience that you cannot put on a sheet of paper to see all the bulldozers, the cranes, the the hundreds of workers, they're working on a project that they believe in because this is part of their future. But now I'd like to ask some questions. What gave you the inspiration to take on a challenge this big? Uh, The scale was the first thing that got me interested. And I think part of the, the overall vision around a cognitive and sustainable city, and those are two lenses I've traditionally seen a lot of my career through. One of my biggest sort of motivations behind this project is for us to continue in our effort to preserve as much of nature as possible and to create a city that can sit side by side with everything that people need on a daily basis and everything that the economy needs to thrive. I think working on such a radical and I would say, challenging project. Every minute of every day counts. We all know it. So I think that sense of responsibility is what really drives me. And Giles, everyone wants to create a legacy. So what are your goals? The legacy of the line will be that we will start to look at buildings uh, and suburbs in a different way. So can we save time and get more accurate, less waste, more sustainable, and I think the modular thing is really going to be a big part of the success of the line. I think what we do is the legacy that we leave behind. I think what the line does is that creates an equality, which we've rarely seen before around the world, providing equal health care to all of the residents that live on the line, Mm -hmm. equal access to education, Mm -hmm. higher education. So what are some of the challenges and some of the solutions that you guys have come up with? The line allows us a a unique opportunity to placemaking at height. Our challenges on the line are not to eliminate the bad stuff because that's already not there. I think our challenge is always how do we make it better? Um, We have, of course, the rule book of how to build cities and how to build buildings and so on and so forth. But this project rewrites the book. Absolutely. We are right now designing the line differently. We're using AI extensively to model out and that disruptive technology is allowing us to compute consequences of our design decisions very quickly. So in this example, some of the institutions that we're working with are redeveloping their two-dimensional AI models that mapped how people move in a city and where the hotspots are and where the sort of main traffic happens into models that now work in three dimensions. The kind of work we have to put into it is intense. So we work with people who model movement in cities, people who study neuro-urbanism, which is measuring human response to uh, height, human response uh, to certain proximity to people. So we're getting that people enjoy seeing greenery and seeing views that are almost surreal in nature. We're building a city not slowly and incrementally. We're building a city at once that is of a different typology. Salwa, it's sometimes said that where the youth goes, there goes our future. How does the line play in terms of how the young Saudis view the future? So the team that I work with is made up of a sample of the young Saudi generation. And I can tell you that the ambition and the drive that we wake up with every day is unshakable. The line and Neom and Saudi in general is giving us the freedom to invent, to innovate, and really think purposefully and thoughtfully. Uh, we're looking at diversification of industry and, and economy as well. And NEOM plays a major role in that. It's going to bring new technology, new industry, and new services, whether financial or tourism, into the kingdom and as part of that 2030 vision. Well, in conclusion, I'd like to say that, well, you convinced me, folks. I mean, I'm sold. 
<laughs> I think you guys are actually talking about something that's going to affect the destiny of civilization itself. A new architecture, a new way of thinking, a new way of organizing ourselves, a new way of living. People are going to say to themselves, wow, something new is happening in Saudi Arabia. They've taken the lead. They're thoughtful. They're planning, and they're going to enrich our lives. And so on behalf of, well, everybody, I'd like to thank you so much for giving us a new vision, a vision of our future. Thank you very much. Thank you. I teach in the United States, and learning the history, there were waves looking to create utopia. Many of them failed. But why? They were not sustainable. They did not create enough money, resources, food to sustain the economy, to keep their vision alive. Well, that's where I think the line comes in. The line has made sustainability one of its key foundations. This time, we have a good shot at making it happen. A city created to address the problems of pollution, overcrowdedness, inequalities, so in other words, we are creating the future of the human race. <laughs>